Welcome for our uh, webinar on the French startup in Malaysia. Uh, my name is Michel Lozac. Uh, I'm the Malaysian director of the Malaysian French Chamber. So we're very happy to have this um, interesting event, something new, which started with uh, a simple discussion with uh, Benjamin from Rio Irash and also Johan from the French Tech. We decided to try to do um, a little update on the, the situation of the uh, French startup in, um, in Malaysia. And uh, Tina, have you, are you putting on the screen the, the, that everybody yes, yes. The, the French economic footprint on Malaysia? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, just before we start, just a quick reminder about what is the French uh, presence in Malaysia. We have about 4,000 French people living here. We have about uh, uh, 500 companies which are established in, the, in Malaysia. All the CAC 40, all the big companies are here. But importantly, we have about one third, over 30% of our members who are actually French entrepreneurs who are chosen Malaysia to start their, uh, their business. When I say French entrepreneurs, that means they have, uh, in any way, they have no direct link to France. They are not a subsidiary of a French company, but they just started their business uh, here. And um, this is a link to the startup because I think a significant number of these some 150 companies are actually within the startup uh, movers that we, we have around. Malaysia France trade is, um, is significant. Is, uh, France is the third largest partner of Malaysia in, uh, in, uh, in ASEAN. And also um, uh, the Malaysian French Chamber is, as its name says it, is Malaysian French, so that means we are as much here to help French companies to come into Malaysia as we are to help uh, Malaysian companies to develop uh, their business also. And um, as you can see on the, the, the slide that you have on your screen, you can see that we have important organization, Malaysian organization. We are part of our patron. I would like to mention the MDEC on Maida. MDEC is here uh, with us today, and I think uh, this is a good introduction to say who are the people who are going to be uh, with us today for this uh, little review of the startup ecosystem in, uh, in Malaysia. So first of all, we have, of course, MDEC, Mr. Siva, uh, the senior manager business development, uh, which will be with us on presenting after that. We have Enchik uh, Mohamed Yusni also from Magic. He will explain what, how Magic contribute to the, to the ecosystem. Of course, Johan, uh, Johan Gegen from the, the president of the French Tech Malaysia will also uh, update us on the, what is the French Tech in Malaysia and uh, what, uh, what are the, the activities. And then we will have uh, three testimonials of uh, French uh, startup or people who have, uh, who have got what it takes to, to start their uh, activities in Malaysia. So Benjamin is with us from Rio Mirage. Cyril, the founder of Elixus, is also with us. And uh, Mamadou, the founder of Absaya, is also with us. And to hand uh, the team, Elisabeth uh, Lobel, our HR uh, consultant for the chamber, is also, is also with us. So I think uh, without any more waiting, I shall uh, let uh, Mr. Siva to uh, introduce what uh, MDEC is doing for the system. Yep. Siva. Uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Bonjour, uh, let me share my screen. Is it possible, Tina? Yes. Okay. I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, 
uh, it's uh, disabled. I think it's at the host side. Can you try now? Yes, can. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share this slide now. Okay. So, so yes. It was disabled. I went here and I put this. Okay, so so um, um, bonjour and uh, good evening and good morning for those who are in France. So I'm Siva and uh, I'm from uh, uh, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation or MDEC. We look after the digital economy development in Malaysia. Okay, for those uh, who are from France who, who have not been to this part of the world, uh, Malaysia is somewhere in the center of Southeast Asia, uh, south of Thailand and uh, north of Singapore. In terms of uh, digital economy, there's a huge opportunity in Southeast Asia. There's 360 million internet users and it's expanding or growing on yearly basis. Uh, and it's predicted by 2025, there's, uh, there's going to be 240 billion USD in terms of digital internet economy opportunities. So there is about seven unicorns or homegrown unicorns in Southeast Asia, and it's expected to grow even up to uh, uh, 20 by uh, the next five years. Okay, and uh, Malaysia uh, being in the uh, uh, center of Southeast Asia is one of those locations where a lot of companies, whether large MNCs or, or scale-ups or startups, even startups, uh, uh, you know, looking into uh, 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 setting up their base to uh, further grow and also provide service to uh, rest of Southeast Asia and also Asia. So some data here, uh, we have attracted almost uh, 3,000 technology companies to be based out of Malaysia, uh, which has contributed almost 90 billion in terms of investment so far. Okay. And um, what uh, MDEC does uh, in terms of developing the digital economy, of course, we look into the talent development in Malaysia so that uh, uh, companies, whether large corporations or even startups, they will have ample of talent in the areas of uh, big data, AI, cybersecurity, uh, FinTech, drone, and et cetera. So we look into talent development starting at the school level uh, and then getting a lot of industry and academia collaboration at the university. We have a lot of funding programs uh, for upskilling Malaysians in the areas of big data and all those fully funded by the government. We, we have a target to produce uh, by end of this year, uh, we are almost achieving a 20,000 data analytics uh, professionals for that, uh, so that they can be catered uh, to the uh, industries in Malaysia. So these are some of the talent development initiative. Uh, of course, we are, uh, I have to mention these, uh, even 42 or ECHO 42 have set up their finishing school here in Kuala Lumpur. We have General Assembly and, and the other initiatives. In terms of uh, the second priority is to look into developing more and more digital entrepreneurs or startups out of Malaysia. So the government is uh, putting, uh, putting a lot of uh, focus uh, in growing the local uh, startup and also tech, ecos uh, tech company from Malaysians, okay? Then the uh, third initiative is the digital adoption. So in terms of adoption, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, certain as aspects of the industry like uh, finance and, uh, and business services is quite digitalized in Malaysia. But now the government has putting in, uh, putting, giving a lot of funds or, or grants for companies, especially in the manufacturing. So if you are a startup or, or provider of, uh, of uh, uh, industry 4.0 or, or manufacturing automation or productivity, there's a lot of opportunities because the government is putting a lot of money for, for Malaysian companies to get automated or digitalized. So the industries that the government are focusing now is manufacturing, logistic and retail. And then of course, agriculture, tourism and healthcare. These are the other industries. So there's a lot of grants for local companies and they need global solutions like yours. Then uh, the government is also fo uh, focusing uh, a lot through MDAC on the creative content industry, trying to uh, develop or attract more companies in the areas of visual effects, games development, and also animation. And lastly, uh, creating uh, uh, test beds for data and port industry, uh, port IR uh, activities out of Malaysia, okay? So how can the government support if you are a small company or a scale-up or large uh, setups which are setting up in Malaysia? For smaller uh, startups, uh, Malaysia uh, has the Tech Entrepreneur Visa. We call it Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Program or MTEP. 
if you are a startup and look uh, and you need a work visa, you can apply for this program. And then we have uh, digital hubs where we connect companies to VCs. So there's a lot of large uh, local uh, uh, investors here and also the Malaysian Sovereign Fund and all those who are ready to look into uh, uh, fast growing startups out there to invest. We have facilities under digital uh, uh, hub where we connect companies to test bits in Malaysia. We connect companies to accelerators and mentorship and stuff. If you are a large company, uh, your requirements are totally different. You are looking into uh, number one, tax incentive. We have that. We have up to 100% uh, tax incentive for up to 10 years. Uh, the government supports through the MDEC or MSC program uh, in terms of hiring foreign talent, everything through uh, MDEC. We also uh, uh, support companies in terms of connecting to potential partners within our 3000 plus technology company. Okay, uh, my last slide here. So uh, if, if, you are look, uh, if you are a global company or French company looking into Malaysia, we have the entire ecosystem for you to uh, set up here a presence and look into uh, or validating your solutions out of Malaysia. So we can connect you to uh, locations like CyberView for you to have a soft landing space. We have the tax incentive and grants uh, under the MDEC purview. We can connect you to uh, other uh, government agencies uh, which could support you in terms of your engagement with the Malaysian government side. We have the supporting ecosystem like the business support centers, uh, whether it's recruitment, whether it's the chambers uh, and also the hiring uh, uh, agencies. Okay, and lastly, uh, we have the complete uh, database of the digital ecosystem, whether where you can you find the right talent. Okay, connect you direct with the universities, the accelerators, the incubators, uh, and all the supporting areas. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Siva, for this uh, very effective and short presentation. Um, my MDEC, the entry point for the company is a digital and startup. So that's the way. Next uh, presentation will be from Sheikh Mohammed Yusni, um, Senior Manager for ASEAN Center of Entrepreneurs um, from Magic. Yusni, that's for you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to CCI and uh, the organizer for giving opportunity for Magic to be part of this program. I'm so honored to be here. Um, if I can share my slides, hang on. Can everyone see my slide? Yes. Okay. All right, so um, a quick introduction about MAGIC. Um, we are actually is um, the agency under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. Um, we have been established in 2014. Um, our, main, um, um, uh, our main core uh, to do actually is to look into startup, startup ecosystem, which is actually from the technology startup and social innovation as well. Um, we have been going through a program. I mean, we run a program for about thousand, hundred over thousand programs since our inception and have created about the value creation of 1.9 billion. Um, to give you a bit more overview of that. Um, so this is actually uh, some chart that I can share with you. Um, we actually work together with agencies, uh, sister agencies, something like MDAC and you know, MIDA and um, Talent Corp. Um, so that's where the touch points, where we work together with ministries, private sector, even universities uh, for the target group like entrepreneur. And we also have specific uh, you know, thematic like for women or youth and uh, rural uh, for those actually below 40% income. Um, our target audience are practically entrepreneurs and also inspiring entrepreneurs. For example, like those people are still in the universities and stuff like that. Um, and our target startup are very much from the technology startup and also social innovators. Uh, so what role of magic play here? Actually, we play as a, you know, as a bridge. Uh, we do navigate in terms of uh, the ecosystem from startup journey from the, from the start until the end. And we do a lot of uh, programs and we facilitate and navigate between uh, you know, startup and uh, market access as well. Um, so from the ecosystem point of view, um, our mandate mainly are actually doing a capacity building. And we do a lot of uh, programs such as accelerator programs and even boot camps. And we also help uh, startup incomes to market access. 
uh, that means uh, we also help startup in terms of funding as well. So magic uh, doesn't give fund, uh, doesn't take equity, but we work together with agencies, you know, like MTech or Cradle or Mathcap that have those kind of facilities that can provide. And on top of that, uh, there are also startups that looking into a major market that probably certain areas are not very well regulated yet or policy. So that's where we work together with regulatory bodies as well. Uh, but for the benefit of today's, uh, when I spoke to the organizer, I want to share uh, specifically on one program that we just launched uh, in, uh, in a couple of weeks ago. And this program is called My Startup Hub. And My Startup Hub actually is specifically looking into uh, supporting foreign startup coming into Malaysia. It's a soft landing program uh, in providing, you know, something like uh, company cooperation, even talent, co talent acquisition and also market access. Um, so this program uh, targeted into two types of startup, uh, you know, that inspiring entrepreneur looking into Malaysia. One actually that we have a startup that come to us that's already thinking of Malaysia as a platform. And they're already looking at Malaysia as one of the destination. And this is actually, if you look at on the right side, there's an there's a, there's a A here. Uh, that is option A. That means uh, the startup already looking into Malaysia. They just need uh, some sort of, um, you know, uh, support in terms of a couple of stages like how to set up the business in Malaysia, how to find a local talent that can help them to grow. And also, we also help them to actually connect them to the market access. Um, but at the same time, we also have a startup that come to us and say, look, I like Malaysia, but I'm not sure whether Malaysia is the right, right place. So that's why we created a program. We call it as virtual market access. Since we cannot travel at the moment, we create a virtual market access first. Maybe it can be physical in the future. So this one, actually, we do a, like a three days boot camp, all right? So in this three days bootcamp, uh, we will facilitate this startup in fact finding into the Malaysia market, understand their goals and understand their pain points. And after that three days of bootcamp, after understanding their requirement, we will go through a 30 days mentorships. And this 30 days mentorship is where we're going to help them to actually look into what are the business that they can look into in Malaysia and also potential partners. Obviously, since, Malay since Magic, like I said, mentioned just now, we are under the ministry. Um, and when we run a program, we run with taxpayer money. So therefore, uh, for us to justify to our stakeholder, we put some fee there uh, just to make sure that, you know, they understand that uh, the stakeholder will ask, you know, uh, how do you support uh, local talent and foreign talent? So we support foreign talent with this program, but this small fee that will be charged on that. Uh, but even then, at the end of the 30 days, you will get some sort of a market insight report to understand that, okay, Malaysia is the right place there for you to come in. And with that, with that concrete data point, we give you about six to 12 months to understand about Malaysia and set up business in Malaysia and help you to actually look into that three to five local talents within part of the journey of your Malaysia. So that's particularly about, uh, you know, uh, my startup. Uh, we're very straightforward. Uh, you can ask me more questions during the Q&A and that is really my last slide. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Thank you, Justine. Are you, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay. Terima kasih, Justine, and thank you very much. Uh, very, sama, sama. Uh, very interesting and comprehensive uh, proposal. Um, French, ta French tech in Malaysia. French tech in Malaysia. We will ask uh, the president, Monsieur Johan Gagen, to update us on the, this uh, organization who, with the Malaysian chapter started last year. Johan, c'est pour toi. Yes, thank you, Michel. So very good morning, very good afternoon to everybody. I want to thank uh, the French Chamber of Commerce for, for the invitation. Very happy actually to present uh, to present you uh, the French Tech. I also want to thank MDEC and Magic. That's very important. And uh, I think the presentation just demonstrates how dynamic the ecosystem of Malaysia is. And this is very important. So as mentioned by Michel, we are actually a very young community. The French Tech Malaysia is actually born this year in April 2020. So we are very, very young. Uh, we are a young community, diversified com community as well, highly diversified from the small, uh, small company to big company uh, in different fields. So I can see there is some of our members actually who are attending this webinar. So I will just share with you how diversified we are. We are covering uh, different fields, HR, e-commerce, event, digital marketing, IoT, edtech, transportation. Those are some of the some of the field we are uh, we have uh, we have member. Um, more than this, what we offer. So I would say first we are uh, we are a group of 
entrepreneurs, very important entrepreneurs, startup, no matter you are coming from startup, you are coming from big companies, we are, uh, we are looking for entrepreneurs. Uh, what we provide, we provide visibility, we provide networking, um, we, can, we can help on different fields. So if you are coming from France or from another country, and I think Magic and MDEC has a very good point, we are also a point of contact where we can help you to connect with the correct institution based on what you want. Uh, you can find also other talents, either you are really looking for talent or we are just looking for partnership. So one of the big results we got for the past few months, we actually uh, help uh, some, of our, some of our members to find some talents through the networking. We also help them to find some partners. So there is some uh, startup who, who were born during our community. Some of the people who got startup and find a partner to help them, some contractor, you name them. So this is, this is one of the power we can do. Um, one a very important as well, because every entrepreneur, I would say, uh, feel a bit alone some of, some of the time and they are looking for support and they cannot find it. So with this community, actually, you can find some support. We like to do some experience sharing. So we got some, uh, we got some experience sharing, I would say every month. Myself, actually, I got benefits of those, uh, of those um, session quite often. Uh, we are also organizing some peace session. This is one of the new ones we are organizing. So some of the entrepreneurs, they, they want to get investors, they want to sell their product. This is great. You can find a lot of uh, material online, but you need to practice. You need to get the real information so we can organize this. And actually we are doing this. We got uh, some event coming uh, for our members some, uh, somewhere in January. Um, finally, uh, the French Tech is open to, I would say, everybody who got interest in the startup industry, uh, who are entrepreneurs or entrepreneur enthusiasts or wants to, wants to do this. So we welcome literally everybody. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell in the, in the French Tech. I think the best is actually to present you some of our members. So I will give the word actually to... Uh, to Benjamin. Benjamin is in HR Tech. He has a, he has a great company and uh, he will present you what he's doing. Thanks very much to everybody and Benjamin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Johan. Thank you everyone for, for joining and, uh, and uh, uh, Michel uh, and the, the MFCCI team for the, for the organization and for having us here. Uh, great presentations, very, very sharp, very fast from, uh, from, uh, from MFCCI, MDEC, Magic, amazing, and, and now French Tech, Johan. So I, I'll, I'll share my screen now to, to, to share a bit about, um, about Brio HR and our, our journey so far as a startup established in, in Malaysia. Uh, but I, will, I want to also stress uh, what has been said a few times uh, until now is that actually the most important will be the questions you might have uh, uh, for, for, for us, for any of us, for all of us at the, at the end of this session, because the, the idea is really to, to share our experience um, uh, on the questions and to address the questions that, that really are, are burning as you are considering Malaysia or um, um, to establish your business or, or anything else more than the uh, prepared presentations. So the idea is that I will first uh, tell you a bit more about Brilliant so you understand who we are, what do we do, who do we serve, uh, then uh, switching to a bit more about our experience establishing uh, in, in Malaysia uh, since a little bit over two years. All right, so first of all, in a nutshell, uh, Brio HR, so uh, it's uh, uh, initially a team of two. It, it often starts uh, in, in those numbers, and that's actually a, a great time to be. So two, two um, French founders. Uh, my co-founder is also French, Nabil. We, we met while we were studying our, our MBA uh, in, uh, in Singapore at, at INSEAD. So we incorporated Brio HR in 2018 after, after a few months of uh, you know, d debating and, uh, and ideating on what we and, and, and what and how we should do, basically. Uh, in 2019, we were uh, fortunate to be able to, to raise some uh, funds from uh, investors, which helped us uh, build the core team and literally start building our HR platform, which I will introduce in a minute uh, from scratch. In uh, 2020, just checking. Okay, in 2020, definitely as all of us uh, around the call, we weathered through a, a, a unique uh, phase of the business and potentially a unique phase uh, in, the, in the world, the COVID-19. Um, however, we have been uh, once again fortunate enough to be in an industry that, that, that was linked to digitization. And uh, we really uh, uh, enabled, I would say, some companies to power their HR processes. 
which, which helped us despite launching in a very uh, special year and very difficult year for a startup to, uh, to, to acquire our, 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 our clients and to, and to, and to help them um, also manage, manage through this crisis. And that, that's, a, that's a very big point because I'm not sure that it would have been possible uh, from many places in the world other than, than Malaysia. So we have now um, uh, three offices. The main base is in, in Malaysia. We have uh, smaller offices in Singapore and France. We have uh, around 20 employees and hope to grow. We have a lot of plans for 2021. Uh, as often, uh, or at least at the beginning of 2020, a lot of plans in Jan got a bit uh, smashed by the COVID-19. So, so let's, uh, let's forget a bit about, uh, about in uh, two, three, five years and let's think about what we can do now. Um, uh, to date, we have a little over 100 clients, 100 companies that power uh, their HR processes through, through Brio HR. So Brio HR, what, what, what is it basically? The idea is that uh, we create and we gather, uh, we create the platform that gathers all HR processes in one place in an in a easy to set up, easy to implement, user-friendly way, and most, more importantly, covering all the employee journey all in one place. So the, the idea is that you can, you can within uh, Brio HR, manage recruitment, manage, sorry, the first touch points with the, with the candidates and, and future employees, then new joiner onboarding. Uh, once the employees are really in the company, we run and automate all the HR administration aspect. So you can automate your payroll. So payroll will ensure you are compliant with the regulations as it is approved by LHDN, uh, which is the Inland Revenue uh, Board for uh, Malaysia. We are also uh, compliant with Singapore uh, rules and we are adding more and more countries as we speak. But in addition to payroll, you will automate and digitize all the lease management, the employee database, the document management of your company, time sheets and tra time tracking processes, all processes that are usually scattered across different platforms and different uh, sources. Um, lastly, uh, but, uh, but very important, we also cover performance management, which helps manage uh, essentially KPIs, OKRs, year-end appraisal, uh, 360 feedback, all in a very automated, meaning that we remove a lot of the administrative burden and uh, in, a, in a very user-friendly uh, way. So essentially, turnkey processes to help your company remain compliant and manage your people seamlessly. Uh, with a big emphasis on people uh, more than the, the administration aspect of human resources. Okay, so we, we have many types of companies from SMEs to large MNCs. So three very short examples of the type of companies we help. So for example, um, the Hormon Group, 400 employees in Malaysia, eight subsidiaries, so very fragmented. They have some host hotels, some restaurants, some schools, and actually, uh, typically, those are companies that are a bit under-equipped and do a lot of manual work first. So as I was saying earlier, they have different uh, uh, databases, like one Excel file with a list of employees to do a manual performance, another Excel for leads management, maybe a software for payroll, and so on. So we help them basically digitize all of this and uh, uh, centralize all the data for much easier and more efficient uh, management. The second uh, characteristic is that sometimes they don't know where to start because it's it's complex organization. So we basically help them to just uh, uh, one by one implement different modules so that they can cover in the end the full employee journey in terms of HR processes. Uh, a second type is uh, our companies with a regional footprint. So I'm very happy to, to, to take as an example Elixus. So Cyril will be one of the speakers in a, in a minute. Uh, amazing company. Uh, I, I will let Cyril uh, uh, tell more about it. You, you, I will not do it justice otherwise. Um, basically, uh, the characteristic of Felixus is that it has started from Malaysia, but has a regional phone trade. So it's present in a few countries in the region, so very distributed teams. And the idea, what we bring to those companies is also a, a greater level of digitization, but also standardization. So it makes it easier to understand what is happening uh, across the organization, even if you have people scattered through different countries. And the third type of companies that, uh, that we help are uh, local or regional subsidiaries of MNCs. For example, we work with Bosch. So in Malaysia alone, it's 5,000 employees. Uh, so we can help very, very big companies. And usually those companies, they have their group HR software 
that are centrally managed in Europe, in the US, or wherever they are headquartered. Um, but they are often um, lacking some of the local tools or some of the end user tools, meaning that those big HR software, they are essentially great databases. But when it comes to engaging your local employees or uh, recruiting faster, recruiting better, uh, putting in place a real-time day-to-day uh, -day performance management process, they sometimes, and, and actually very often, don't have the tools they need. So that's where uh, we come in to, to help also those, those, those type of companies. Very quickly on the journey so far, so getting started in Malaysia. So big question, why Malaysia? So um, we are both French uh, founders. So, so why Malaysia out of other countries in the region or even France? Uh, so first of all, uh, I've been uh, in Malaysia for 10 years. Nabil, my co-founder, uh, was in Singapore before founding uh, Brio HR. And uh, we both had, therefore, a, a good knowledge of the country, the culture, and uh, definitely we knew about the, the high quality of life that Malaysia offers. Um, it's, a, it's actually a, a, a great country for, for many aspects. First of all, it's very business friendly. We've seen that with the, the amazing uh, programs and, and support from, again, MFCCI, um, My Startup Hub with Magic and MDEC. Uh, you also have more slightly more informal networks such as French Tech. So it's, it's, it's very business friendly and, and, and easy to, to, to meet people and to, and to get to business. Easy to set up your company. Low structural costs, uh, which is one of the, the, the biggest aspects, even if there is a lot of qualitative aspect. Um, let's be clear, costs play an important role. If you are starting a company, meaning you, you literally have only costs, <laughs> no revenue yet, um, then it's good Then if the costs are, uh, are low. However, a low cost should not mean that you struggle everywhere. So the, the, the crazy thing about Malaysia, the unique blend, I would say, of Malaysia is that you have high access to talent, very high level of education, uh, a lot of uh, tech uh, focused uh, curriculums and so on. So, so very good access to, to talent. And of course, a superior infrastructure. Um, so it's arguably uh, uh, as good or better than some of the other traditional business locations that we could think of. Also, and I, I touched on it very quickly, it's easy to network. It's very easy to access to decision makers at client. I was having a, a chat this morning um, and, and we, we were actually discussing the same thing. In, in, in Malaysia, you might be able to talk to the very top people of organizations and companies, which, uh, for example, in Singapore, um, you might not have access to because those will be some bigger uh, organizations and so on. And definitely in France, you will not be able to reach uh, the, the, the top level people in, in, uh, in the biggest organization that might become your clients. And because they are decision makers, uh, makes the... the the sales cycle, or, or at least the, the networking, much faster and much smoother. Um, it's a vibrant startup scene as well, with a good access to, to investors, which is linked also to the strategic location aspect of Malaysia. Uh, so you, you, have a, you have a lot of uh, push from government uh, agencies and institutions to uh, enable the, the Malaysia as a, as, a, as a tech hub, as, as a tech uh, space. And uh, you can see it also with how um, investors are, are looking at, at Malaysian-based uh, startups, meaning with a lot of interest. Okay, so finally, of course, uh, there are some hurdles. Um, so the good thing is that, again, there are many resources that can help you clear those hurdles. The first resource, obviously, will be um, yourselves. <laughs> um, the, so the hustle is real. So when you start with no name, no brand, no product, no money, no clients, no team, you're by yourself and you have your, your idea, but your idea is, is worthless at this stage, um, then just get out there because uh, people are welcoming. And by people, I mean um, your, uh, your fellow expatriates that you will meet. So of course, French, but not only French, but of course, the Malaysians. It's an amazingly um, uh, welcoming people and you can learn very fast about Malaysia and the way things are done here just by getting out there. There is no magic if you stay uh, uh, at, at home, not much will happen. The second one, formalities. Yes, it can be heavy to secure a visa or to set up in the right way. In this case, very simple. I would strongly encourage to leverage local companies, um, but also institutions and agencies. So you, you, you had a, a, a huge sample here at the beginning of this call with MFCCI, 
MDEC, Magic, and French Tech, there is no secret. Get, get help, and, and later on, you will help others. And finally, which is also my, my last point, uh, yes, of course, there are cultural differences, but it's really a matter of mindset. Uh, you can very easily get lost in small details in your mind, like, like gi giving too much importance to uh, some small details because, yes, it's not exactly the way you are used uh, to, to, to do something or the, the way you are used to communicate and so on. But actually, uh, Malaysia offers the best balance in terms of uh, a mix of the Southeast Asian uh, culture and the Asian culture, along with a, a, a huge uh, a level of familiarity, I would say, with, with wherever you, you come from. So, so all in all, all together, uh, it, um, it makes Malaysia really the a favorite destination to set up a company or to set up regional operations of a, of a more uh, established companies. With that, uh, I will leave and, and uh, hopefully uh, we will talk more during the Q&A. Thank you very much, Benjamin, for this is a very complete presentation. Without waiting, we think we ask uh, Cyril to, to take over, uh, since also Alexius was mentioned in the previous presentation. I'm sure you have a lot of interesting things to tell us. Cyril? Hello, everyone. Yep, yep. Thanks for having me today. Uh, Benjamin sold a lot uh, of things already, so I'll try to be uh, quick and keep it uh, sweet and, uh, and short. So let me share my screen for a second. Oh. All right, should be good to go. Okay. All right, so my name is Cyril. I'm a French entrepreneur. I've been living in Malaysia for five years now, and I'm officially a permanent resident uh, of Malaysia. So it should speak for itself, like uh, as it is a good country to, to be in and, and to work on. Uh, I've been working in a lot of different companies. I've created a first company that I've already uh, sold, and uh, I'm now on my second venture, which is uh, Elixus Agency. So. Same format as, as Benjamin just before, uh, a few words on the company and then just focusing on uh, why is Malaysia such a good place to do business. So Elixis is a digital marketing agency. We have uh, we created a year and a half ago. Uh, we were five people at that time. We are now 50 people uh, across six different offices. Um, being um, So Malaysia has a headquarter. We are in Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, Singapore. Uh, we work also in Indonesia and Hong Kong, but from Malaysia. So we are a, a performance marketing agency first. So we worked on the entire scope from media buying to social media, to creative design, to web development and email marketing. So the entire scope. And the idea of the company was to work on a growth model. So to plug a gap between consultants in a, in a way where there is solo entrepreneur or solo practitioner with a lot of experience, but absolutely no ways and capability to execute. Traditional branding agencies that are very good at brand DNA, look and feel, but that are very lacking in terms of actual online sales. Ad tech uh, and tech platform that are selling a property tech that enable media buying at scale, but it's like buying a car without knowing how to drive. You still need people to operate that and traditional agencies that are very reliant on people and not so much on the tech infrastructure. So we are really at the in-between of all of those players, uh, working as a, almost as a remote digital team. Um, so as I was mentioning earlier, um, we've grown fairly fast in the past year and a half and despite COVID, and especially quite a lot in Malaysia. We work with any type of customers. Uh, you will definitely recognize a few French names, being uh, Decathlon or L'Occitane or even Peugeot. I am brand being a French Malaysian company. Um, and we literally work with startup entrepreneur, um, SMEs and international companies uh, across the region and also the world. Same, I, I'll go quite fast on this, but the idea behind Elixus was to work. I, I come from a CMO background, not an agency background. And the question everybody is asking as a CMO are always those three things. How do I get more traffic and how do I drive more eyeball into my product or my page? How do I make sure they convert? And how do I make sure they repurchase if that's possible for your product? 
So basically working on this acquisition, activation and retention model, um, because we again think it's like companies nowadays on digital not only need one, but need the entire infrastructure to be successful. So our services to answer those three steps, are the one I mentioned earlier, so performance marketing, everything related to media buying. So doing advertising on Facebook, Google, TikTok, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, you name it. From the strategy, the creative, the execution, and the reporting, it's really an, an entire solution. Uh, anything related to social media, so content writing, social media presence for brands. Uh, so even for instance, uh, so Brio HR just mentioned us as a client, but we're also working with Brio HR, for instance, for their uh, performance marketing. Ultimately, the last two services would be web development and SEO. So, um, I mean, very straightforward. We are, when you do business online, you need a platform to sell into, and that's where we could come in play. And eventually the email marketing, which is the way to close the loop. So when you acquire people from your performance ads, you activate them on your social media, they convert on your website and you eventually retain them through different channel, inclusive of email marketing. Um, so anyway, I didn't want to spend too much time on, on that part. I'm happy to have a chat uh, right after uh, if, you, if you guys need. I, I really wanted to speak about why Malaysia has been such a good place um, to, to work. Um, uh, and, and to actually establish the company. Um, so I'll say, and I'll take Benjamin's uh, word, and the last sentence was, that Malaysia is about balance, and I really believe that. I think it's the, the, the actual word that I would use is compromise. Like you will see that Malaysia might not be the best country when you take every, um, every, every aspect separately. But when you put all of them together, that's where the magic starts to happen. So to name just but a few, if you look at your cost of living and operating costs uh, uh, in Malaysia, it's, it's pretty affordable, if we usually compare to Singapore, for instance. Um, it's not the cheapest, like Philippine or Vietnam would be cheapest, but then you enter into the English language, where Malaysia is actually everybody speak English, that's the language of the business. Um, with some specificities and, and, and some different dynamic, but this is one of the core. Um, it's a very dynamic ecosystem in digital. I think this, just the fact that we are having those uh, discussion proves it. But um, it, it, everybody is looking right now for activating things online and that creates vast opportunities for a lot of different players. You have all the talent pool, so Malaysian are quite interesting in, in the fact that a lot of them have also studied abroad, come back. So they're very um, open uh, and very digitalized um, and usually fairly affordable. Again, if you compare to, to a Singaporean neighbor, um, the maturity of all the players in general is you have very, very mature player and you have a lot of this industry, which is way behind. If I take digital that I know pretty well, it's surprising. We always picture Asia as one of the first mover on all digital trend, which is actually really not true. Uh, so there are a lot of things to, to tap on. The network, uh, the fact that there is a lot of entrepreneur and everybody is helpful and willing to do business with each other. Uh, you know, just again, like you can see the cross business between all of us and the cross opportunities that can come from it. So it's very accessible to start uh, and to, to get in touch with the right people. Um, and ultimately, if you're even looking at, if you have a digital product, the cost, uh, either the cost per click, the cost per acquisition in general as a market in Malaysia are quite accessible compared to the neighbors. So not as cheap as the Filipino cost, for instance, when you, go, when you look at trying to, to market on social media, for instance, but it's, it makes it very attractive. So again, if you take all those points, there are pros and counters, better countries, but when you put them all together, I think Malaysia is, is one of the best um, you, you can find. Um, I guess, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop there, is maybe a few tips on the different question people, people ask in general is like, okay, what are the hurdles? What are the difficulties? Uh, how we should, what, what should we do to make sure we succeed in Malaysia? And I think I, I just try to summarize into three main points. Uh, definitely recruitment is a key. Uh, I mean, it's true in every startup, it's true in every country, but Malaysia is a market where talent can come and go pretty easily. Uh, the, the, the approach and the relationship to the employer and to the work environment might be a bit different from what we used to in France, for instance. 
Um, so my first advice would definitely be uh, getting a headhunter or, 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 or in-house the way you want to do. But that was my first hire for the company, especially when you're looking into scaling, because you will have people coming, leading the company, no matter how well they're paid, no matter how uh, well you manage and teach them. That's part of the game and you'll need to be ready for that, the ability to keep uh, getting people in and, and be prepared. The fact that you should never consider Asia uh, and Malaysia as one country, but always think as a region. Uh, Southeast Asia offers a lot of opportunity when thought that way, and there is a lot of low hanging fruit to seize in every country. And that's why I eventually went into using Malaysia as the hub, but expanding to every different countries. Um, and, and that would mean, and don't make the mistakes of trying to just settle into one country and then only stay there, like a Singaporean uh, headquarter, and then just try to penetrate all the market. It really doesn't work that way. There are so many differentiation in terms of language, culture, uh, background, expectation, uh, competition, that uh, what I did for Elixis was to have one office in every country. And eventually, what I really love about Malaysia is that um, try fast, fail fast. Uh, everybody is very keen to experiment, and everybody is understand what an experiment is, so that might come with a lot of good things, but also with a lot of fail, uh, and it's fine. And and the speed of work in the country, uh, while I'm, I'm again speaking purely for what I know, which is the digital space, that might not be true on everything, but on the digital space, it's it, it's quite it's quite intense, and that allows the company to grow super fast, much faster than what you can have, I believe, in other countries or even what we used to in France. Anyway, that's all for me today. Uh, happy to answer any question and to go and to deep dive uh, a bit more into this during the Q&A. Merci, Cyril. Okay, uh, let's continue with uh, Mamadou. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, the French uh, Malaysian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thanks also to uh, La French Tech for organizing uh, this session. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Just if can, someone can let me know if you see my screen. Right, wonderful. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a French. Um, I'm French. I've been living in Malaysia for for f uh, for five years now. Um, so I am. Uh, uh, I co-founded Upsaya. Uh, Upsaya is a, is a business matching and a networking platform uh, to help uh, uh, business events to engage with their customers. So I'll be presenting uh, for a few minutes our, our company and uh, most importantly for, for me as well, uh, like uh, Benjamin and Cyril, is to share uh, my experience and how Malaysia happened and how we are leaving Malaysia uh, as, a, as an entrepreneur. Uh, so we are focused on um, helping uh, business events and uh, communities uh, to match make with their attendees. Uh, so we provide a business matching and networking platform uh, to help you meet with the right person when you go to a, to a business event. So our tagline is to, to, to really do our best to make every meeting count. Uh, we are fortunate uh, to work with world leaders uh, in the event industry. Uh, we work with uh, informal market, uh, which is the world leader in the in exhibitions. We help also Mihas, which is the world leader uh, in the halal economy uh, events. Uh, last year, Mihas uh, gathered uh, about thirty thousand people coming from uh, all over the world. Um, we are also very uh, happy and honored uh, to be representing Malaysia at Dubai Expo. Uh, our business matching platform will be used uh, to allow uh, companies around the world to schedule meeting with Malaysian uh, companies. So we also serve uh, many events uh, in Canada, in, in, in London and around the world. So this started here in, uh, in Malaysia, uh, but it's a pivot uh, from the, the journey we have started in France uh, about eight years ago. So uh, let me... Uh, walk you through quickly about uh, what, what are the solutions we, we are bringing to the, 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 the challenge we found in this industry. Uh, if you are 
familiar with events, you have exhibitors, uh, you have buyers, uh, you have speakers, you have uh, the event organizers, the sponsors, all these people come to this event or organize this event or uh, sponsor this event uh, with some objectives. Uh, if you go to this event, you might be interested to meet with people about 90% of people going to this exhibition, they go there to meet with people. Uh, but the level of satisfaction in the event industry is as low as 34%, uh, especially in uh, the trade shows. Uh, so we are uh, here to, to bridge a gap in this, in this event industry to make all these people uh, work together uh, to, to, to help them to optimize their time and make the deal closure faster, but also make you meet with the right person uh, seamlessly and in the, 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 the easiest way. So this is why we come up with the business matching and entropy platform powered by artificial intelligence. We are at the beginning of artificial intelligence. We are at the machine learning capability uh, to allow us to learn from people's behavior on our platform. Uh, we provide a very simple uh, tool for the attendees. Uh, it's a web-based platform and also a mobile, uh, mobile app uh, to the attendees. And we go give also to the event organizer a very powerful uh, administrator dashboard where they can monitor their performances and also uh, increase engagement uh, during their events. Uh, our solution uh, until now, before COVID, was uh, al allowing people to schedule meetings online and meet uh, physically. That was before COVID. Uh, the, the need to meet online were here, but uh, uh, there was no catalyzer. So COVID happened and now people are meeting online. So this year we, we made a, a, a small pivot by providing a one-to-one -one video meeting for this event to allow them to happen online. You schedule online and you meet online. Uh, it doesn't mean that the physical event should go away, definitely, but this is a, a component that is a, now a real option for events. Either the event is full online or the event is hybrid where people can meet online before the event, meet physically and then meet online. All this to allow them to reach their objective the, 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 in, the, in the best manner. Uh, and also COVID happens uh, it allows us to build a, a, a new platform uh, based on our appointment engine, which is a business community platform, allowing organizations to, uh, to, to, to match make their community uh, all year long. Uh, we have signed recently with one of the prominent government agency uh, to allow potentially 900,000 companies to connect to our platform, schedule meetings online, based on the product and services and then meet online. So we work for, with exhibitions and conferences, corporates, education, governments, and association. So these are the three main products I just mentioned uh, to you. Uh, our feature goes from uh, a, a matchmaking platform, sorry, uh, from a matchmaking uh, platform and a powerful meeting scheduler. We have been in meeting scheduling, appointment scheduling for, for over eight years. The journey started in France. And by the way, Apsaya is appointment Saya uh, in Malay, it's my appointments. So we are really focused in making uh, uh, appointment for, for people. So we have a business directory. Uh, we have added the, uh, the, the video meetings and live chat as well. And also analytics for the event organizer to monitor their events. So, that's all for, for Apsaya. And uh, now I would like to share uh, with you uh, my experience, our experience uh, with Malaysia. So my experience in Malaysia started uh, about 10 years ago uh, when I was uh, finishing my master's of science in France. I wanted to go very far from my roots. Uh, I was born in Senegal and I've been living in France for, for 20 years. Uh, so. I wanted to go very far from, uh, from my roots and, and Asia was the part of the world I wanted to really to, to have experiences. And then I heard of Malaysia, heard of Mahathir, heard of, heard of uh, uh, one of the most, uh, the, the fastest growing economies in the world uh, in, in Southeast Asia. 
and uh, Malaysia is different uh, uh, with many of the the, 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 the factors my my fellow panelists mentioned uh, the, 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 the the culture uh, the in English the, the the level of development so I say okay let's try uh, Malaysia and see how it works so I applied for an internship and I was fortunate to be accepted in uh, in Penang uh, it was in University of Science Malaysia uh, it was a short internship, but this allowed me to visit Malaysia, to visit the country. So I went to many, 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 many uh, areas, uh, the tourists, and also to mingle with people. And I love the country. I really love the country. And I say, okay, I go back to France, but I find excuses to come back and live here <laughs> with my family. Uh, so I went to back to France. I worked with some, some companies and uh, I created um, our first startup in France. So when I was in Malaysia, this is where I, I met with uh, uh, people who, some of them who became uh, my co-founders. Uh, I met here, that was in Singapore, uh, with the, the president of La French Tech, but he's my schoolmate, we know at school, <laughs> we knew at school, school. But when I came in here, he was in Singapore, so we met there and then he uh, told me about the good things about uh, Asian Malaysia. So, and then uh, uh, five years, after uh, after my internship, uh, we decided to 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 to, to uh, take the leap and uh, start the adventure uh, in, in in Malaysia. Um, so before I came here, I before we settled the company a few months ago, a few months before, I came here for ten days to to understand the, the ecosystem, to under to to see uh, how 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 to 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 get uh, this company on. And this is when I discovered. Uh, uh, magic. Uh, it was the beginning of, uh, the, of uh, the creation of a Malaysian uh, Global Innovation and Creativity Center. Uh, so it was a, a great uh, information for me to know that uh, we can come to Malaysia and also had a quick acceleration uh, with uh, an agency like uh, like Magic, uh, where they can you to help you to have market access to mingle with other entrepreneurs and also help you, uh, like my fellow panelists said, to really give you some real help uh, where you can uh, uh, speed up and also uh, uh, avoid wasting wasting some time, especially if you are a new entrepreneur in a new country, in a new market, in a new context. Um, so then after we came and we created the, the company, then we pivoted many times until we found the business model that uh, we are uh, doing right now. Um, so a key note about magic. So because uh, uh, we are one of the maybe one or a few uh, French startups who joined this accelerator program, uh, it's one of the best uh, in, the, in the world indeed. Uh, it's, uh, it allows uh, startups to get uh, real uh, market insight, market uh, access, and they really help you. If you want to meet with a specific uh, uh, government organizations, specific companies, some specific investors, they really help you. This is the thing I've found in, in Magic. And also they, they help you uh, to, 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 to work out your, your presentation in front of the investors, to, to, to tell your story. And also they, uh, they, they, they train you in many, many, many fields. Uh, so we've really benefited from uh, from these programs. I, I really encourage uh, French startups who like to come to Malaysia. This is one of the great options you can uh, you can find, I believe, uh, to 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 help you really uh, sail in, uh, in 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 Malaysia. So my last note is just uh, Malaysia is a great country. I believe my it has been already said. Um, uh, the the, the uh, there is a huge potential. Um, and uh, even if during COVID in our field in digital, it had been a great year for us and we have a lot of help and good talents uh, in, in this country. So that's all for me. If you have any question, please do not uh, hesitate to, to get in touch. Thank you, Mamadou. Mamadou Ndai, founder of uh, Hapsaya. So we have gone through our three um, the testimonials. Before we go to the question and answers, I just would like to uh, add a, a little thing uh, from the Malaysian French uh, Chamber of Commerce. As uh, you know, uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce is uh, as first an associative uh, side, getting people together, networking, and so on. We have about 300 uh, members. 
Uh, however, in uh, Malaysia for MSCCI, we have also developed a lot of activities to support our uh, incoming French companies uh, to Malaysia and also our entrepreneurs. Uh, CCI France Malaysia assists in average about 150 to 200 French companies in various services in, uh, in a year. And um, over the last five years, we have developed a special program of support to um, entrepreneurs who come, who, start, who need uh, help to start, who need special, who don't have much money to spend, also need, uh, many times they need some support in terms of uh, immigration uh, matters and so on. So we can complement, we can complete uh, all the support uh, ecosystem, which is already uh, provided by Hemdec, by Magic, by Maida, also by Talent Corporation. So we work closely with all these uh, organizations and of course uh, with the uh, French Tech. And uh, so just would like to highlight that we, we have some, uh, we can also assist you. It's not only uh, the, the French Chamber, is not only for the big companies, but is mostly more, much and more for the entrepreneur company. Before we go to the question and answers, I would like to uh, give a chance to Elizabeth uh, Lobel, our consultant, uh, HR consultant, to maybe uh, talk a little bit more about uh, just, just a few remarks she may have about uh, HR services and all the specific support uh, we can provide or any comment she has about the HR market, talent market uh, uh, in Malaysia for startups and digital economy. Elizabeth, that's for you. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, Elizabeth Lobel. I am responsible for the HR support uh, department in, uh, at uh, MFCCI. We can uh, help any companies, uh, including uh, um, uh, non-established companies here in Malaysia, to to in their program of uh, recruiting. So we we have. We know a lot of talents, particularly the talents who can uh, speak French, actually, and for many companies, it would be a, a nice uh, opportunity, actually, to, 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 to get this kind of uh, talents. We can help for issuing, uh, in issuing the, any contract, employment, and more importantly, we are always happy to help in order to explain what are the candidates' attitude? Uh, digital economy, as you know, is, um, uh, is, uh, in, is increasing. The competition between uh, companies, between candidates is, is huge. And many, many candidates tend to actually to shift from one company to another one. So we will give you any advice and information so that you can keep your talents as long as possible. Okay. Merci, Elizabeth. Anything else on your side? No, no, it's, it's okay for the moment. I okay. will ask some, so, some, I will raise some, uh, some questions for the, later. Okay, so let's start the question and answers. Uh, and then for the, the moderation of this, uh, we will have uh, Benjamin and Elizabeth for that. So maybe, Benjamin, do we have uh, any questions already? Sure, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Michel, and, and thank you, Elizabeth, for for this as well. Um, we have a few questions. Uh, feel free, everyone, to to send more questions in the in the Q and A in the chat. Um, anywhere we will we will find it and we will answer it. Um, so uh, maybe one first question to I think it was the first uh, asked. I think so. I will uh, I will I will quickly uh, take it myself because it's addressed to me. Um, from Benoit, Benjamin, I was per coincidence in touch with John. John is someone from our team at BHR. Uh, in the past few days, I would like to understand how do you charge for startups? Is it the cost per employee, fixed cost, whatever the size of the company and so on? So in very short, uh, it's a cost per employee per month, depending on the modules you will, you will uh, take. Um, having said that, I will not go further on the, on the, on the salesy part of BHR and, and give way to the, to the other questions. Very happy, and I will leave my contact details in the chat 
to uh, to to have any any questions specifically about Bridger. So let's get to the to the to the Q and A with a question from Fabrice uh, from Vision Box. Do you face difficulty to keep talents? Full stack developers, uh, a lot of head and thing are proposing foreign developers. What is the baseline to recruit? Um, maybe uh, maybe I will give this one to Cyril, as I guess in some of the services, he has some, some services like this. Maybe not uh, specifically on full stack developers, but again, very, very important as you mentioned, recruitment and retention just before. Hey guys, uh, sure, happy, happy to take this one. Um, so in terms of um, in terms of recruitment, so specifically for full stack developer, uh, I don't recruit. Uh, but for most of the digital uh, most of the digital headcount, uh, the, the the real key for me is simply two things: is you have to have some sort of visibility. So attending to a lot of different events, being virtual, uh, local, is you need to be on the map somehow. That will really help getting this. Um, people just being interested into what you're doing. Um, I think salary is, is quite important in Malaysia, is one of the biggest decision-making points for most of them. So my advice is when you can try to uh, do offers that make a lot of sense and, and sometimes a little bit, I would say, overpay compared to market price uh, because there are a lot of jumping ship very fast. Uh, usually that tends to work, but that cannot be the only only thing to consider. Obviously, it's going to be just salary, but um, this is important. Um, in, in terms of, uh, of of foreign talents, that might be specific for full stack, but um, we, we do have developers in Malaysia. Uh, I believe, Ben, you have yourself a uh, developer in Malaysia. Uh, so so they are all, all the... There is almost no jobs that you cannot fill with the local headcount. Uh, doesn't mean it's easy, but it's definitely doable. And there are a lot of good talent. That's why I usually definitely recommend to go through uh, your own headhunter, especially if you need to scale, or through a headhunter uh, that might uh, that might speed up the process. Um, hope that answers the questions. Uh, definitely not pure and full, uh, full stack, but I uh, mm -hmm. hope that gives some pointers. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Cyril. And I, and I would uh, further on the on the aspect that salary is, is of course key, but there are so many levers uh, that actually are applicable in Malaysia, but also beyond in that uh, providing a, a great experience and, and development uh, um, areas for, for employees. Uh, another question from uh, Fabrice uh, again: Can a foreign company with fifty percent French VC can join the French tech? Um, I think Yuan uh, replied in the in the chat but i think it would be interesting to to have the the answer from from you and for everyone yes so so thanks for the question I, actually uh, as i mentioned uh, during the the presentation the french tech is a pure open community and everybody is welcome as long as you have an interest for entrepreneurship i would just add this as long also as as you have interest in Malaysia, so you are based in Malaysia, you are intending to come to Malaysia. There is a French tech, I would say, all over the world. Uh, so we are dedicating for Malaysia, uh, except than this, we are open to pretty much everybody who, was a, who is an entrepreneur or was interested in entrepreneurship. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Johan. So very open uh, group uh, from, what, from what we understand. So thank you very much for, for this clarification. Um, Maybe on to the to the next question. Thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Do you perceive that the political uncertainty will have a big impact on any aspect of the business? Um, will uh, Will Michelle Elizabeth from FFCCI or uh, MDEC uh, Magic want to to address this question and give their, their view on this? Okay, I uh, can may, I can maybe start uh, from MFCCI uh, point of view. Um, what I'm going to say is from uh, so far from the from the result we get, I mean from the the, the, the variation we may get from uh, communication, interest, questions that we receive from funds or also from companies who are uh, or entrepreneurs who are already in Malaysia today. When we look at it, uh, honestly speaking, not many people are talking about the political situation. 
uh, maybe the one from our, our perception, maybe the one who are in uh, uh, project related activities, uh, of course, are deeply concerned with uh, political uncertainty, which uh, of course delay much needed decision on certain projects. Other than this, on the day-to-day -day operation for most of our members, for most of the people who contact us, we do not perceive any specific uh, fear or concern about, uh, the, about the situation. I think um, people are the perception, at the same time for those who are here, also the one in front, the perception of the reliance of Malaysia in terms of uh, economical reliance because of the diversity of the economy and also by the, the strong aspect of the institutions in making things, uh, I would say, uh, affordable and making people comfortable. Even so, political situation is currently a little bit unstable. Anybody want to say anything else? Maybe Siva, you want to say something on that? Yeah, thanks, uh, Michelle. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, uh, from, from our experience with investors itself, uh, uh, political uh, uh, impact on business is very minimal. Uh, budget just got, uh, you know, the national budget just got approved even today. The uh, bigger impact is, of course, uh, general businesses are a bit slow because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, that's the bigger impact and it's a global impact. So the, what the government is doing now is to uh, boost the economy and they are look, taking the digital way. So there's a lot of funds and grants for digitalization of industries. That's something that the government is uh, pushing through and, uh, and uh, we hope, uh, what do you call that post pandemic, I think uh, uh, a lot of uh, the uh, industries in Malaysia will be digitalized and the economy will, is expected to grow at 7% in 2021. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Siran. Uh, maybe, maybe if on the on the magic side, on the on the magic startup hub and so on, do you foresee any any impact? Or on the contrary, are, are, are completely uh, um, confident that that uh, that's still the, the best time ever to 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 start a business in, in Malaysia? I thank you, Benjamin. Um, um, I think I echo to Michelle and also Siva because um, unless you are looking at business related to the government. Uh, that probably a bit uh, slow in terms of the decision making, uh, but like mentioned, like Siva mentioned, that uh, governments have put a lot of emphasis in terms of building up the economy, and I think a lot of initiative have been done by the government to spur uh, the you know the startup ecosystem, the entrepreneurship, the uh, the small medium industry. There's a lot of uh, initiative and fund to put into um, you know new initiative to help to uh, you know grow the local startup and also bring in foreign startup that looking into Malaysia you know, try to look into ASEAN as a, you know, Malaysia can be the hub to look into ASEAN market. And um, I think, um, like, I think what Sivan and Michel, uh, Michel, uh, Michael mentioned that uh, the most part that actually is, um, you know, uh, uh, disturbing the uh, economy right now actually is the COVID-19 situation rather than the political situation. And I think it affected the most, I mean, entire region. Uh, but uh, thank thankfully, I mean, uh, you know, like our sister agency, MDAC, and also uh, other government putting a lot of effort in terms of technology. So even in Malaysia, uh, we do, I mean, we do a lot of programs and we have been from, from February on March, we have moved a lot of program into a uh, digital platform. And even we, and then just to, just to share, uh, for the last, uh, the last, within this one quarter, uh, my team and Magic actually have done um, immersion program to Taiwan, um, India and Europe, uh, all virtual, and you know business as usual. So nothing much is going. You know, uh, stop. Uh, where are we going to? <laughs> so thank you. Very interesting, and, and thanks for this. Actually, the it's true that the virtual programs is something that we we start to get a, a bit more used to, and uh, and it's amazing that uh, that it helps you know keep the world open despite this uh, this pandemic. Definitely, thank thank you very much. Um, we have a question from Jawad uh, for Mamadou, actually. So Mamadou, I think your story about uh, Atsaya in Malaysia was so nice that Jawad is interesting also as to what were your biggest difficulties or challenges when you actually started. Wow, interesting question. Thank you, Jawad, for the question. Um, OK, um, other entrepreneurs, so it's not easy in it really it's not easy to find the biggest problem because you 
wake up every day with uh, a lot of challenges uh, from <laughs> from uh, from your the product market feed, from finding the customers, from getting revenue, uh, from financial, for getting uh, investment and so on. Um, so there are many challenges, uh, but to, to be really frank and honest, uh, uh, I haven't seen one that I could mention my biggest in it. So there are challenges, maybe I can share uh, one or two, um, maybe for uh, someone who starts to, 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 be, to pay attention to, uh, to, to this, um, it, it will help them to, to, to accelerate and uh, avoid some, some of the mistakes we have made, I have made. Uh, so I think it's uh, it, it, even what I'm what I'll be saying uh, might not be only uh, for for Malaysia, uh, but uh, mostly as an entrepreneur in, in digital, uh, it's very important to have a core team um, because uh, uh, it's, it's the journey is not easy. Um, but if you have a core team built in in values and culture. Uh, you can sail uh, from uh, challenge to challenge, from struggle to, 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 to struggle. Um, uh, and another uh, thing is that um, uh, the luck, I mean the luck, uh, it's not easy to find um, uh, developers uh, in, 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 in software. And, but this, <laughs> this challenge is not only Malaysia. You go to France, you go to the United States, you go everywhere. Uh, it's not easy to find a developer or good developers. Um, so especially if you have a market and uh, you, are, you, you have customers uh, asking you to add for some features and uh, if you don't have the right talent, it might take you longer time and uh, it can reduce the quality of your deliveries and you can uh, miss out with, with things. Uh, so the core team I mentioned is, is uh, having a core team of, dev of, of, of developers uh, that can help you also to, to, to say. Uh, but on, on, in, rea in reality, uh, the thing I want to share here is that I found in Malaysia so many opportunities. Things go, went so faster than, than when, I, when I was in, in France. It has been mentioned but, uh, by my fellow panelists to, to get in touch with a CEO of a huge organization you will not be calling or sending emails or uh, letters or someone. You can just mail them, they give you uh, their name card and you get in touch in WhatsApp and then the, the next uh, day you are having a makan makan with them. So um, this makes really things, I mean, fast, quickly you can validate your market and quickly you can uh, pivot and so on. Uh, while in some other countries, uh, it may take you time to, to, to die. Uh, I mean, to die. When I mean die, other than start up, definitely you have 90% or 95% to, 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 to die. Uh, but this is part of the deal. So uh, the fact that the Malaysia help you to quickly get in touch and know whether people want your product or they don't want it, or they want you to change things quickly, you get these uh, responses. And for an entrepreneur in the new technologies, it's absolutely uh, essential. So that's Thank you, Mamadou. Very interesting. So, uh, so I definitely, uh, I, I mean, we, we can also um, uh, summarize in a way that that Malaysia is definitely a, a good destination, and and you will still face some issues, but issues that you face on a daily basis as an entrepreneur, basically, <laughs> no exactly. matter what. Excellent. Thank you very much. Exactly. We have a question from Felix here. Uh, uh, are new French startup in Malaysia looking for locals? or also for French talent. Um, so, so this is a question, it's, it's a bit uh, uh, difficult to, to answer here because we, don't, we can't represent or, or speak on behalf of, of everyone, but uh, for sure, uh, uh, French companies, French startups in Malaysia are hiring. And I guess then it's all a matter of profile and the question with the, with the job. So definitely uh, reach out uh, and, and, uh, and there, will be some, uh, there will be some opportunities um, for, for French talents and obviously, of course, uh, for locals. Um, um, so it, it would really be a matter of, uh, of, uh, of getting in touch with, with those different companies and, uh, and feel free to join one of us and, uh, and maybe French Tech can help. Uh, the French Chamber of Commerce uh, can definitely help a lot, including Elizabeth. Um, and, um, and maybe I will take the, the, the last question we have in the chat before I actually hand over to, to Elizabeth. So we have a question from Amin. 
Uh, I'm a digital marketer and I want to open my digital marketing agency in Malaysia, but I'm not targeting the Asian market. At the moment, I'm focusing mostly on getting USA clients. Is it still possible to come open the company in Malaysia and stay there if I'm not planning to get Asian clients? Uh, if yes, how much does it cost and how to do it? So maybe that's a, that's a lot of information that, that will not be able to, to be 100% answered uh, right now. Uh, I might not want to ask um, um, Cyril because uh, because uh, it's it's a direct competition. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, of course, joking. But um, uh, I mean, maybe from from my experience, the where you have your clients is, is not necessarily what what matters the most. Uh, it, it can be um, I mean, many companies use Malaysia for many uh, for many how to say um, type of business units and type of activities. Uh, I guess as long as it's legal, as long as you can contribute to the to the economy here, uh, there is a there is a there is a chance. Uh, how much does it cost? We mentioned it earlier. Malaysia is very cost effective. Difficult to to give a, a precise number, obviously depending on on what you want to do. But definitely, uh, Malaysia is a, offers a very good ratio: quality of talent, quality of life uh, versus uh, the cost. Uh, of everything, maybe uh, maybe someone from uh, the Chamber of Commerce want to add something on on it. Maybe you have some um, some similar cases that oui. you might. Oui, Benjamin, I will uh, just uh, add uh, something very simple. I think about uh, every day. Uh, by the way, this morning we had a we had a call uh, with a, a French uh, a French company which is based in China in Shanghai and he's looking at uh, moving to Malaysia. But firstly, for personal reasons, for the family, and maybe secondly, because his business actually is in America. So he's, uh, he's, uh, he's looking at coming to Malaysia first to leave, and maybe from there we'll see whether he can develop a company and so on. So uh, this is what I reply in the chat group, is that for any people who have an inquiry about how to settle in Malaysia, whether it is purely for business or is for family matters, social matters or whatever, give us a call, we arrange a phone call and we will give them the various options and we will, if the need arises, we will relay to the relevant agency, which in this case for digital marketing could be with Zemdeck, okay? but. Uh, it's uh, very difficult to answer this kind of question. In writing, just from a question, is something we need to discuss further on a phone call will be the trick. Amazing, thank you. Thank you very much, Michel. So we will have uh, maybe five uh, minutes remaining. So, so time for, for more questions. Uh, I think Elizabeth, you mentioned that, that you, you had received some questions or you may have some questions. Would you want to, 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 to take over on, on this? Yes, thank you, Benjamin. Actually, many, many, several questions have been already answered, but I have one or two specifically for, for MDEC and MAGIC. Um, you, you, you have also implemented a, a big, big program of support for uh, all startups. However, uh, there are also, you have some competitors, not to mention, but uh, for example, Hong Kong and Singapore, and to mention the few. So how, in a very, in a two or three words only, how you make Malaysia different from these this countries, from the other uh, Asian countries, in order to attract the best project in digital marketing? So uh, let me start first. Um, uh, Okay, so from, from our MDEX experience uh, working with uh, global investors, as I shared earlier, we have about 3,000 plus technology companies. The, the main uh, difference set between Malaysia and uh, Singapore and Hong Kong is uh, number one, it's a multi-racial, multicultural country. So most of the uh, centers here in Malaysia, whether large startups or, sorry, startups or large uh, organizations, they use Malaysia and then expand to the region because of a lot of Malaysians, we speak similar language like the Indonesia, okay? Uh, and then we, we, we are very close by to Singapore, Hong Kong. Uh, there's a large, uh, you know, we have the largest uh, Mandarin speaking population outside China. And a lot of centers even support Japan, Korea, uh, as the earlier question, US, uh, the Indian subcontinent, and even uh, uh, some companies even does French support, uh, like SWIFT and all those. So that's uh, reason number one. 
Reason number two uh, is, of course, uh, there's a large enough local market. Like if you go to Singapore, you can't uh, uh, really test bait your solution. So here, uh, Malaysia, at one side, we have the large cities with some of the best side skyscrapers in the world. And then we have the rural population. We have the Bonio side and, and the peninsula. So a lot of these companies, they try out their solution uh, in terms of a rural, urban uh, location in terms of uh, you know, uh, uh, different culture, the Indians, the Chinese, the local Malay. So, so they're able to customize their solution for Asia in, in large. And third thing, of course, cost. Uh, earlier, there was a question on cost. Uh, cost is very much, uh, Malaysia is one of those cost competitive location. That's why a lot of companies they set up here. If you are going to Singapore, it's six times higher. And Hong Kong, of course, uh, uh, it's higher. And there's different challenges like Chinese security law and stuff. That's that's my answer. Yeah, thank you very much. And actually, the, the, your, your first um, the first point related to multi multiracial and multi uh, language is actually the maybe one of the best. And for sure, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore uh, they cannot uh, compete uh, on, on that. Uh, I have a, a a second question. Although com startup which are under MDEC might um, might benefit uh, some advantages in order to recruit more uh, foreigners, you must be aware of um, uh, a new project from the government to implement a platform, uh, My Future Jobs, that uh, will uh, um, channelize all recruitment of foreigners. Do you think um, in terms of course, this uh, new project and this new platform is a bit scary for many investors because they think that they will not be able to uh, to foreign to recruit any foreigners, including themselves. What do you think about this platform? Do you think that the, it, this uh, project might in, um, affect um, project on uh, for startup or not? Okay, uh, so. Um... Uh, this new platform uh, was uh, raised by the, uh, the the government. There was a lot of objections from uh, various chamber. I think even uh, CCIFM and all the other chambers. The government listened to it. Uh, at the moment, the update is that it's already put on hold at the moment. So it's a good news. Yeah, it's a good news. And uh, and uh, so so the government listens and they would want to. Uh, uh, make Malaysia as friendly as possible in terms of uh, uh, attracting new investments. Yes, and uh, let's assume that this platform will be implemented. Do you think that it it will affect or not your your, uh, uh, your um, digital uh, environment? Uh, I I feel in my view uh, is that there will be a lot of engagement with the uh, uh, industries, the chambers, and all those stuff, and uh, the government. If they are going to implement this, there will be uh, some consensus at both sides. There should be a win-win. How can we uh, uh, protect uh, at one side local uh, jobs, but at the other side, how can we uh, make Malaysia as a location to uh, to uh, provide global support? Because global support, you need global talent, and the government realizes that. Yes, we really we really rely on your support in order to postpone as much as possible this uh, this project. Another thing uh, for me, I'm Dec, you mentioned that you are uh, you are focusing on uh, several areas and fields, manufacturing, logistics, retail, agriculture. Uh, but do you have any, um, any specific um, area in each of them? Because manufacturing is very wide. Logistic is very wide well, as, as well as um, retail. In order to better attract, and uh, while we are talking about marketing and while we are to, uh, trying to attract the, the best investor, it would be maybe better to, to, um, to narrow down and to identify uh, some target, uh, targeted uh, investor. So do you have any specific area in each of the, each of these fields, manufacturing, logistics, in order to better attract the most suitable investor? Okay, uh, for, for, for this kind of, so, so why did we decide on manufacturing retail? Uh, because manufacturing contributes like 22% of the GDP 
and uh, retail is about 15% of the GDP, and then agriculture is 6% of the GDP. Okay, so these are the focus sectors, and in terms of uh, digitalization, there's a lot of opportunity because manufacturing and retail is at the lower mid-tier of digitalization comparing to oil and gas or finance. Okay, they are at a higher level of digitalization. And industries like agriculture is at the lowest level of digitalization. And um, our approach at this moment uh, is more uh, towards the demand side. Okay, not on the supply side at the moment. That's why we would want to uh, encourage more uh, tech companies to, uh, uh, to work on the, uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the digital uh, demand side that we are, we are creating. So the government has allocated, say, example, uh, for large companies up to 500,000 ringgit or 125,000 USD uh, for them to implement pilot project for large organization. They have also allocated another uh, 3 billion soft loans for companies who are looking into automation, digitalization and stuff. And then uh, the uh, government has also announced uh, for SMEs up to 50% uh, matching grants. Uh, for a budget of 5,000 and, and, and that could then they have a, multi, a, lot, a lot of loans to support them. So we are looking on the digital side and in terms of demand, where exactly the demand comes from, um, uh, uh, I would say the, uh, uh, it's, we are still, uh, uh, how to say, we just started this initiative and we are looking at the demand. We haven't really uh, looked into the supply side. Okay, of course, manufacturing, uh, if I break down manufacturing, the electronic sector in Malaysia is quite digitalized. Then the next big industry is uh, it's the uh, uh, what do you call that the uh, uh, the food the uh, the glove factories and all those. That's what the government is funding. So I I, I don't have an answer for that. We are still uh, trying to dissect the uh, the demand side and then provide information. But in general, we are looking into productivity tools. Uh, tools uh, which uh, could uh, make better customer engagement between the, uh, the manufacturers and the clients, uh, tools which will help to improve uh, productivity in terms of IoT. So these are some of the areas. And then, of course, agriculture, we are looking into total different uh, spectrum uh, areas, could be from drone uh, uh, for fertilizers and stuff uh, to uh, all kinds of things. So I would say we are at a very early stage of digitalization in these uh, three industries. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Yusni could uh, add on to that. They have uh, uh, some interesting programs on that also. Um, yeah, thanks, Eva. So um, I think from uh, Malaysian, I mean, from, from our perspective, uh, because we are under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, um, there's also initiative by the ministry looking into doing things like a sandbox. Um, even though this program actually is very much um, targeted for local startups, and local company, but having said that, if I say foreign company that come into Malaysia, uh, you know, like to work together with a Malaysian uh, company, for example, like joint venture with any startups uh, to provide solution, because we may not have the solution available in Malaysia at this point in time, uh, but we are encouraged and we actually would like to see uh, if there is any solution out there that can come in and, you know, complement uh, any of our local startup, they already have, you know, some sort of solution that can provide to this requirement. So Sandbox work with as um, for example, like what uh, Siva mentioned, the drones. Um, there is a drone industry in Malaysia that is picking up. It's just that um, when it comes to the policy and the regulation, you know, uh, at you know, how do you really operate uh, those kind of equipment in, in open environment? So this is where the government work together. For example, like Magic, uh, we have been given the uh, the um, you know the, the rights to actually start talking to the industry player, and we have this um, entity called Felda, uh, and they give us a site. Uh, for us to actually look for any solution that come from that industry to help to actually generate uh, you know, more interest uh, for the corporate and startup uh, collaboration so that we can come up with a new solution and then the policy will come into picture. And this is where we assist, you know, uh, even like FinTech area, even uh, in healthcare. Uh, those are the things that a government try to push um, to, to spear up uh, the, the, the startup ecosystem industry in Malaysia. Thank you. Um, I have also noted that you mentioned that uh, you plan uh, there are already uh, 3,000 data professionals now in, in Malaysia. Uh, can you share with, uh, with her what would be your target in terms of uh, amount of talent within, uh, for example, within two or three years? 
because I think even though you have the 3,000 data professional, it's still always um, it's still not enough uh, compared to the to the enough current too. needs from company. I'm not talking the project. I'm just talking the current needs of the company. So how do you do you have any any perspectives in terms of for how many people would you would you like would you expect to have it within two years or three years time? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, our target was actually 20,000 uh, data professionals by end of this year, and we are almost <laughs> achieving that. Uh, and uh, and uh, of course, we are also working on the cybersecurity talent and stuff. Uh, at the moment, uh, what we are doing is that, of course, we are working with various, uh, the budget has just been announced. We are working uh, more towards the uh, upskilling of the current talent, especially Malaysian talent. If you have, if, if you're hiring Malaysian talent and you would want to upskill them, you can work with, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, MDEC has been given, like in, in our case itself, we've been allocated about 100 million to look into upskilling the digital talent in Malaysia. Then um, uh, there's other agencies like HRDF, they have a couple of billions to look into talent development. So, so um, uh, we, we, I don't have a new target. Uh, the earlier target was uh, by 2020, 20,000. We have almost achieved that. Uh, now we are working on the new uh, 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 programs and will be announced soon, especially uh, we are, at the moment we are working the post-2020, the budgets and stuff. So yes, there's a, a lot of budgets have been allocated on talent development. But it takes time? Uh, no, uh, there will be major announcements made by MDEC on January 1st or, or first week of January on the digital talent. No, I mean, uh, I mean it takes time to upskill. Uh, yeah, it takes time to upskill, yes. At least you are in the, in the good uh, trend. Thank you very much for, for your uh, answer. From my side, um, I have no more questions. Okay. Oh. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, Michelle. I think we have okay. covered all the questions and we are running a bit late. So maybe Michelle will, will give you the, the, the yeah, parting words. I think we, we will do the closing. So I, I think it's a success because we were supposed to finish at 5.45. We are well uh, doing extra time. So um, I think it was a very interesting session with uh, a lot of good presentations. And um, it's the first uh, one we do. We hope it's not the last one. We have to keep in touch and uh, keep updated our community about uh, the the good evolution of the, the startup uh, ecosystem in, uh, in Malaysia. Thank you very much, Terry Makassi. Uh, merci beaucoup for all the, all, all the panelists. And uh, thank you for all the participants who join us from France and from uh, Malaysia. And we look forward to, to see you soon again. And uh, since we are closing the year, Maybe uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 B